Coming up here on Mountain News this morning, state lawmakers head back to the Capitol in a busy stretch to consider laws. And local leaders in one eastern Kentucky county announced some major upgrades bringing more jobs to our region. Dedicated to eastern and southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News this morning. Good morning to you at six o'clock and it's Tuesday. I'm Dakota Makris. Thanks so much for waking up with us and let's take a look at that forecast with Brandon Robinson and Brandon. It is a cold start to today and I don't think it's going to get that much warmer today. So, it will a little bit. Yeah, not, it'll be warmer than yesterday. That's, oh. that's, that's for sure. <laughs> that's yeah, exactly. But here's the thing. Everybody got so used to those 60s mm -hmm. and 70s and now it's just like, oh, 40s. Yeah, yeah. No, this is what it's supposed to be this time of the year. Mm, does uh, it have to, though? Yeah, well, well yes, guess. it does. Actually, we'll get over. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. It is cold this morning, though, so bundle up as you head out the door. A lot of folks going back to school this morning. Still some closings and delays there on the bottom of your screen, but you see over at Norton, Virginia, traffic moving along pretty well there on US 23. As there's still some snow on the grass, but the roads are in pretty good shape. Watch out for some black ice. Anywhere that were Oh, that water was over the roads. It probably refroze last night because we've got several spots in the teens and low 20s. 19 right now, uh, Wise and Jonesville. 17 in Monticello. Everybody else in the low to mid 20s out there right now. Pikeville, the hot spot at 24. 44 is the average high, so we're actually above the average high today. To code 46 is what we're forecasting, and the record, <laughs> kind of what we had a couple weeks ago, 72 back on this day in 1993. Dakota, <laughs> all right, Brendan, thank you. Well, we now know the funeral arrangements for, Mount, for Martin County Judge Executive Victor Sloan, who died on Sunday. His funeral services will be held Wednesday at 1 p.m. in the Chapel of Crum Funeral Home. Friends can visit the funeral home today from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Sloan was appointed on April 2021 and recently posted that he would not rerun for re-election due to his health. Senator Mitch McConnell shared a statement on Sloan saying, quote, I was saddened to learn of the passing of Martin County Judge Executive Victor Sloan this past weekend. He dedicated his life to public service and his community, end quote. January 3rd marked the first day back after winter break for, the, for students, faculty, and staff of Johnson County Schools. But it also marked the first day for another COVID-19 precaution. The Johnson County School District has adopted a test to stay option for students, which allows any student who has been exposed to COVID to test for the virus as opposed to being quarantined. This is just another tool now that we're able to add to our arsenal to try to make sure that students all have um, a health, healthy and safe way to be able to go to school every day. And those students who test negative will continue being tested periodically during the 10 day period they have been quarantined. While some students are using the test to stay option, several others are having to go to COVID-19 testing locations. Now those locations are seeing a huge increase in testing with long lines. Several school district officials say they are working with local health departments to monitor COVID numbers in teachers, staff and students. Kentucky's COVID positivity rate has reached more than 20%. Now that's the highest it's ever been. The state reported 4,111 new cases yesterday, bringing our case total to more than 879,000. Now there were 15 new deaths as well, putting the Commonwealth's death toll at 12,234. The positivity rate is at 20.72%. You can always find the latest COVID-19 information on our website at WYMT.com. Well, state lawmakers are back at the Capitol for what is expected to be a very busy stretch of 60 days to consider laws. On Monday, some lawmakers outlined priorities. They say both the Republican majority and Democratic minority should be able to find common ground on. As WYMT's Phil Pendleton explains, some of those deal with more health insurance coverage, education and sports gambling. Republicans hold a supermajority in both House and Senate chambers, but Democrats are hopeful both sides can agree on important bills. One that gained traction two years ago was sports betting. We need a system that protects players, provides strict oversight, and generates much needed dollars to the state budget. A bill passed a committee in 2020, but never made it to the House floor. It, along with medicinal marijuana, had bipartisan support. We need common sense cannabis laws 
and are more than willing to work with the office of the governor on making sure that Kentucky has a great medical cannabis law for its people. One of the first priorities of last year's legislative session was to strip the governor of his emergency powers. That is what Republicans in both chambers moved to do. But now, because of what happened with the tornadoes last month, some lawmakers say it's time to give some of those emergency powers back to the executive branch. One bill that passed last year limits the governor's emergency powers to 30 days unless approved by the legislature. We need an executive who can respond quickly to disasters and to emergencies and to running government, particularly when the legislature is not in session. Democratic leaders also say universal preschool and more health insurance protection for those with pre-existing conditions are needed this year. In Frankfurt, Phil Pendleton, WYMT Mountain News. Well, we reached out to Republican leadership for their priorities, but no one was available. However, House Republicans did say that last week that their first priority will be redistricting, which could be voted on this week. Well, close to 9,000 people living in Laurel County will be seeing faster broadband and Internet service. Connect by Windstream customers will be noticing that change soon. Now, this was made possible as part of a $2 billion initiative to help expand Internet service. Now, the lieutenant governor and other leaders were on hand for yesterday's announcement. A great way to start the new year. That was the sentiment in Clay County yesterday as state and local leaders announced two economic development partnerships. Our Chaz Jenkins tells us what those involve. A partnership between Volunteers of America, Advent Health, and App Harvest. Locally elected officials coming together. That this investment proves that we are committed to creating jobs and opportunity and prosperity all across Kentucky. With Let Us Grow, which will bring two hydroponic farms to the county, and the other bringing a business called Mountain Market to Manchester's Main Street. For folks to eat, visit, there will be retail, housing, and jobs created there. We are so excited about these two new projects. Bringing more than 25 jobs to the area. You see the fruit of that labor coming coming to life right here in Manchester and the revitalization of downtown, the investment in agri-tech jobs uh, that are going to come right here to this community. This is what this is all about. All part of the bigger picture of improving the county. Well, we look at their people, so we want to get into health care. Well, we look at their buildings. Well, we want to change the look of those buildings. We want to change the look in totality. And that's what we're doing. Officials saying this is only the beginning for partnerships. We go where we're invited. We go because we're needed. We go because we want to collaborate with local leaders. And we will continue to look for ways to do that throughout the Commonwealth. Bringing growth and opportunity to the mountains. In Clay County, Chaz Jenkins, WYMT Mountain News. Well, Hancock says development on the mountain market in Manchester should begin in the coming months. Well, during her time in Clay County, the lieutenant governor announced funding for road improvements. Now, more than $120,000 will help resurface Sester Hollow Road and Curry Branch Road. Now, the lieutenant governor says it is all about making needed improvements across the Commonwealth. What's really important is that we're focusing on these rural roads in rural parts of the state that need uh, the most attention, really, and investment, and we're committing to make sure that we carry that through. Additionally, more than $80,000 will help resurface Swindling Hollow Road near Anvil in Jackson County. A happy update to a story we covered last Thursday on two-month-old Grayson Cook of Floyd County. Now, we told you Grayson was battling for his life after he started showing signs of sickness and could not breathe. Well, but now baby Grayson is now vent tube free. There he is with a big smile on his face. Grayson's mother, Brenna Halbert, also shared that she got to hold him for the first time in almost two weeks. Now he's still expected to be in the PICU for the next few days. Cute little filler there, 609 here in the weather world, and we're taking a look at some cold temperatures there this morning. We're looking at teens in some areas like Monticello, Jonesville, and Wise. Low to mid 20s out there for the rest of the region. It is definitely a cold and frosty start to the day, so make sure you give yourself time to warm those cars up. Sunny skies will take us to 46 or close to it this afternoon. 
And as you see on the headlines, we're going to be seeing temperatures closer to average the next couple of days before a new cold front brings in some more snow and a cold end to the work week. Dakota. All right, Brendan, thank you so much. Well, coming up, the pandemic encourages some folks to live a healthier life while stuck at home while encouraging others to do the opposite.